All right, guys, welcome to Freshly Grounded, episode 160, I believe. Uh, this is with Strong Believers. So we've had uh, Noor on the podcast before, but um, that was kind of like a joint podcast where we had uh, Abdul Hakim from Sunnah Remedies on it as well. Uh, so this episode has not been shot yet. I have a few minutes before uh, we're going into the episode, um, just waiting for Noor to set things up on his end and me to set things up on my end. So uh, in the meantime, I thought I'd do the intro in advance so i can't tell you what we spoke about because we haven't spoken about it just yet uh, but what i can say is that i intend to speak to him about home workouts uh noor is a big advocate of a healthy mind and a healthy body and um i think a really really level and balanced version of it um he's really strong on on on, on staying fit but you can tell with noor it's not his he, it's not his whole life and I say that in terms of he, he he's a very balanced individual Allah and um, and so it's interesting hearing the perspective of someone like Noor all the time you know he's he's my go-to guy when um, I want to have a conversation that's f- with someone who's a good listener and someone who can give me advice based off of knowledge and based off of practicality um, and I hope that he can do the same for you guys through this podcast. Again, like I said, we haven't filmed it yet, so I don't know what we're going to talk about. But home workouts is definitely going to be one of them because I uh, genuinely want to start uh, increasing my home workouts and increasing the quality of them. Um, as always, guys, uh, you can support Freshly Grounded and uh, become somewhat of a premium subscriber and get a bunch of perks by going to uh, patreon.com. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com forward slash Freshly Grounded. And also, well, I'm looking rough. <laughs> um, also, you can um, help us raise money uh, for children, women, families who are fleeing war in Syria uh, to provide them kind of some emergency um, shelter, clothing, uh, and food and you can do that by get, going to justgiving.com forward slash freshly grounded without any further ado this is episode 160 of oh actually do you know what guys i have an offer for you guys i never i keep forgetting to tell you guys about so i'm gonna do it now seeing as i have some time okay i i know you guys have heard me talk about audible all the time right so i, I listen to a lot of audiobooks and audible have given us a a member a, a discount in membership for everyone listening, for our listeners. And on top of that, um, to be honest, I haven't looked into this enough, but I'm going to get the information now that I've been sent, which is that you can get something from Audible. Okay, I'm going to go with it. So what I've got below is I've got two links. One of them is for you guys to have a free trial. And one of them is for you guys to have a disc- discounted membership. So whichever you'd prefer. If you if you know that you're ready, just jump on the discounted membership. And if you want to try it out, jump on the trial uh, link. I'm going to put both the links, in, li- links below in the description of uh, the YouTube video. But essentially, uh, Audible is what I use to listen to my audiobooks. I literally use it all the time. Um, well, figuratively, uh, use it all the time. Uh, but I've gained so much knowledge and I've been able to listen to audiobooks while I'm driving, while I'm um, doing a bunch of stuff, cleaning uh, around the house. And I'm able to gain some knowledge and get through books that I wouldn't ever get through had I not been listening to them. And Audible is the way that I listen to these books. I've got some great recommendations on books and maybe we could do a podcast about that one sometime. But in the meantime, if you guys want to try out Audible or you want to get a discount membership, I'm going to leave the links below. And uh, what happens is... If you guys um, go through our link, then Audible will give us a kickback and uh, it's a way of uh, you guys supporting the podcast. And uh, yeah, so that's that. Sorry about the kind of length. I should have probably prepared myself uh, for that before I told you guys about it. But there's that. Hopefully in the next episode, you guys will hear a um, more concise uh, pitch of Audible. All right, guys, let's get into the episode. And welcome to Freshly Grounded, the brand new podcast by best friends Faisal and Sam. Huh? I welcome. I said welcome to Freshly Grounded. The, no, after that bit, the brand new podcast. And after that bit, by best friends Faisal and Sam. Really? Okay. Alhamdulillah. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. 
How are you doing, bro? Hello, I'm Barak. You're looking very fresh in like a, a throw, like a crisp throw, and I've just thrown on. I've gone into my bottom drawer and found any t-shirt to throw on unironed because I'm at home. <laughs> bro, I had this. I had this really like bright yellow t-shirt that I've just been walking around in the house with. But I was like, this is a bit okay. too comfortable to to go on camera with. <laughs> so yeah, I just had to find yeah. whatever thought was there, and just chucked it on. I was just adjusting my uh, headset there. Sorry, bro. I was just adjusting my headset. I think that I've got your. Can you just talk for a sec? A sec? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Cool. I got you. I got you. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. Um, bro. Yeah. So. Um, First of all, I have so much I want to speak to you about, bro, because I, I, mainly, I'll be honest, because I said in, in, in uh, um, voice note as well, uh, a bit about kind of workouts and stuff. But mm. um, first of all, how are you doing? How's your family? How's things around, around you? Um, uh, you know, are you guys keeping safe? Are you isolating? Alhamdulillah, bro, yeah. Uh, everyone is doing well on my side. Alhamdulillah. We, uh, we haven't really been going out except for, you know, groceries and stuff like that. Uh, and alhamdulillah all my uh, siblings everyone is pretty much working from home now um so no one's really going out and uh, my siblings are quite strict on it as well they're saying if you if you leave then don't come back because uh, especially for uh, <laughs> you know for like my parents' health and stuff like that uh, they're a bit older and yeah. stuff and you have to be more careful with them so um they're saying no no one to go out so the only place i've been going is kind of my in-laws and back so it's from one house to another house that no one, alhamdulillah, has uh, any of the symptoms. But how are you finding it, bro? Everyone good on your side? Yeah, yeah, alhamdulillah, everyone's good. Uh, bro, likewise, everyone's been really strict here because um, we've got, obviously, babies in the families and then we've got people who um, have had... Um, who have had kind of a prior health condition. So um, uh, my mum had cancer in the past and my nan is uh, over 70 years old. So because of all these kind of reasons, I'm asthmatic. I have a few people in my family who are also who got quite bad asthma as well. So because there's like these things dotted around, we're trying to take as many precautions as possible. Um, and so one of the precautions, sadly, is that we haven't been able to see my nan, who um, anyone who kind of has been following, I suppose my brother or or any of our kind of, any of us for a few years know that we're so close to our nan which she was like our like second mum, like uh, in the sense that she's always been in the same area as us mm. and so nobody's seen my nan for a good few weeks now um but alhamdulillah you know we we drop food over to her we, we're very strict with it in that we'll drop food at her door and then she'll come and get it after That's so fine. we won't really even see her um just to make kind of make sure man she, she she's elderly and uh you know it, it can have a quite quite a bad effect on 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 the elderly actually there's a brother who has been on our podcast a few times i don't know if you know of him his name's adam adam afghan i don't know if you saw any of his yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, clips on our podcast before and uh subhanallah his his grandma has been really unwell and she went to the, so she got taken to the oh, hospital yeah. uh if i'm not mistaken if I'm not mistaken, she may have had a stroke or something, but I, I, I can't quite remember exactly because uh, it was about a week or, or a week and a half ago he was telling me about it. But subhanAllah, she's uh, ended up in the hospital it's catching um, uh, coronavirus. And he said that she's she's on her, you know, the last stage of her life now. Um, she won't be able to recover from the coronavirus. SubhanAllah. May Allah make it easy and may Allah grant her shifa. Amin. That's tough, SubhanAllah. It's, Amin. Uh, a lot of people are losing people who are like in the... Um, Older side of their family, um, so, way before they expected, subhanAllah. Which, yeah, man, we, we had a similar scenario. My granddad passed away in that my granddad went to the hospital because he had a issue with his knee, I believe, originally. Mm. A knee issue. And when he went to the hospital, bro, he just ended up catching uh, one of these infections. And at that age, he was, he was uh, you know, over 70 years old. I think maybe like 75 or something, 73. And uh, he, he, he caught an infection in the hospital. And so he ended up getting a, an infection that was quite severe. Ended up in the ICU. And then in the ICU, ended up di uh, dying of, a, uh, I believe, a heart attack in the end. Oh. And so subhanAllah, a person at that age, just going in because of an issue with their knee, a joint. Yeah. Actually, it's scary, man. It is, subhanAllah. You, you never know when your time is. And that's, that's the yeah. importance of uh, uh, trying, to, trying your best to be prepared as much as you can, making sure that your, at least your uh, prayers and stuff are on point. Uh, you're avoiding the major sins. And you're trying your best to kind of be prepared at all times and not wait for 
for like a time like this to kind of wake you up and subhanallah uh, i feel like a lot of us are so our hearts are dead already that even in a time like this it, it's, it hasn't really made a difference it's just a an opportunity for us to like binge watch on netflix and binge watch this and uh, just be lazy and do nothing and it hasn't really i, I don't know uh, i haven't really seen that to be honest like where people have been like you know what this is a sign like i need to turn back to allah like this is a punishment this is a warning this is this an admonition i should turn back to allah and you know mala mala uh grant us um uh, sincere hearts and uh, soften our hearts and allow us to uh, reflect on these things i mean i think you're right bro i think that on so uh, I, I i think you're right from the perspective of social media if you look at the media in general social media you won't see much of a difference mm. but alhamdulillah i've been blessed enough to in my in my personal life to have seen people around who uh, have uh, it's woken a few people up man and Masha i think Allah. that um if you kind of um I think there are people around who this has allowed uh, kind of people to contemplate and stuff. And at the end of the day, as we know, Allah is the one who guides and Allah mm. is the one who opens our hearts for the people. And, and um, you know, there's, not, there's, not, there's nothing that we can do kind of about, about that other than try. Um, I was going to say something that was quite poignant to your, to your point. And it was that um, I saw a clip on Instagram of this teacher and he was saying that all of these precautions that the governing bodies have asked us to take such as um isolating if there's illness in the area such as um uh washing your hands uh, before you touch food etc and the last one uh, what's the last major precaution that we've been asked to take um covering covering your like uh, containers and stuff like that he said these are, f are taken from a hadith uh, from the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and now we're taking them precautions right mm. because we've been told them by governing bodies and he said something really powerful he said th that's almost like those a hadith not that we would need it but those a hadith have been proven to be correct in these times now right mm. and so he said imagine all of the other a hadith that talked to us about how to protect that's uh, uh, that talks to us about protecting ourselves from a virus and they ended up being correct mm. and now so imagine all of the various ahadiv that talk to us about protecting ourselves from the hellfire subhanallah yeah. subhanallah it's, uh, it's amazing subhanallah even if, if you only we followed them trust me bro uh, and even if you look at how uh, much of a complete way of life islam is that it, t it tells you how to prevent these things and then if you get it, because Islam is a realistic religion, it's not a fairy tale that, oh yeah, you do this, it's going to prevent it, and that's it. No, like Islam is a realistic religion. People are not going to do things the proper way, and people are going to mess up and slip up. So uh, the Prophet Sallallahu mentioned how to prevent it. Then the Prophet Sallallahu also mentioned how to stop it from spreading. Like the Prophet Sallallahu said that if you're in a place of plagues, then stay where you are. Don't go elsewhere and spread it and stuff like that. So... You look at every angle of Islam from the uh, nadafa, like in terms of like cleanliness and uh, cleanliness being half of iman, all the way to not prevent, uh, not to spread it and stuff. Subhanallah, Islam is a complete way of life. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. Subhanallah. You realize it's the. Uh, is it? Go on, Akhi. No, I was going to say that it's so important to contemplate. And I think that this time has allowed people to put their life on pause and contemplate. Mm. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Like uh, the, there's that thing's been going uh, viral uh, with the, what do you guys call it? Lota or something? Yeah, the Lota. <laughs> what do you call it in I don't know, bro. It just looks, it looks just, just looks like a jug in it. So, uh, <laughs> I said in Afghan. <laughs> in Afghan. In Dari, bro. The language uh, <laughs> yeah. of Afghanistan is Dari. I thought you spoke Pashto. No, no, that's uh, that's Nasir. So uh, okay, the two fine. main languages. But you understand it? I understand a bit of it now since uh, my in-laws are Pashtun. Uh, so I've picked up a bit of it and understand it a bit more. But uh, my family, we speak uh, Dari, which is like Farsi uh, in Iran, but it's like a different dialect. So it's the Af Afghan dialect. So, bro, 
let's talk about what I'm really intrigued about. And that's the uh, whole kind of workout side of things. We've had loads of podcast episodes, alhamdulillah, already uh, over the past week. And we've been discussing kind of isolation and we've been discussing the virus and, and the news that's been going around. Um, and, and, you know, there's new news every day. But I think this is the first time we've had an episode in the past week with uh, someone who, you know, really advocates um, mental and physical uh, health uh, to the level that you do and I kind of mentioned in the intro I did the intro already I mentioned in the intro that the, one of the things that I really love about your content and also your mindset is how balanced it is you're so strong on promoting um, uh, like working out but you are so balanced with it in that it's, it hasn't consumed your life um, which is quite attractive because you can see the idea of someone kind of putting things in their place at the correct time so for that, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you haven't been just sitting on your uh, backside all day at home and you've been trying to kind of um, f figure out the best way for you to, to, to exercise. Am I right in thinking that? Uh, yeah, yeah, bro. Like, um, obviously, it's, it's taken a hit since uh, there's no gym and you're limited in what you can do at home. But alhamdulillah, from, from a long time ago, w w uh, I had bought like weights and stuff like that, which my brother uses as well. And uh, they were all just sitting in the shed for a while. So me and my brother got it out. We gave it a nice, nice clean and stuff. And he's really into his boxing and stuff. So he's turned his gym, uh, his room into half a gym. So he's got like a boxing bag there. He's got pads there. He's got everything. So I was like, let me bring the weights there as well. And we can both use it and train. So Alhamdulillah, yesterday uh, was uh, the first main session that I had uh, in his room. Uh, so that's a little, you know, work, working out room now. Uh, and um, I think three, four times a week from home, maybe half an hour, 45 minutes, you can keep intense. You can you can definitely make good use of that time. It doesn't have to be long. Like in, in the gym, you've got so many equipment and stuff like that, that you'll be in there for about an hour, an hour 15, an hour and a half maybe. But at home, I think, you know, half an hour, 45 minutes will suffice. Yeah, I'm. I'm so, so I'll speak to you, Shervin, uh, a day or two ago about um, setting a routine while you're in this isolation. And it looks like we're not going to come out of isolation anytime soon. With now the government kind of saying that we could be in and out of it until the end of September. Um, and so I thought to myself, I don't want to be that person. We we were speaking about excuses, right? And so I thought to myself, I don't want to be that person who. Um, makes excuses left right and center about why i can't do this that i'd like to do why i can't do that that i'd like to do and now we're in a situation where there's no excuse because allah has almost paused our lives right and i don't want to be that p person who even in this time where i really and truly don't have an excuse still find excuses and i think i have over the past week been finding excuses in that you know i relied on the fact that we're doing these daily episodes of freshly grounded and i was like oh now i'm stacked i'm doing eight hours and shooting two or three episodes a day and that's why I said to you at the beginning, uh, before we went on air, that I've decided that I'm just going to film one episode a day. So this is my only episode for the day. I'm going to schedule as many ep episodes, but I'm not going to schedule more than one a day to the best of my ability. And the reason is because I, I, I do, I've realized that the past, how I've been living my life over the past week is not how I want to live the rest of my isolation mm. life. Uh, and even, even if that's only another two weeks. And I'm happy that I've been able to come to that conclusion now after just one week and that means that I, I don't want to be working the whole whole time alhamdulillah I'm in a position where I can um, uh, kind of alter my work and so um, I want to be able to implement things that I normally may make an excuse for so alhamdulillah um, I've been able to kind of adapt my routine now to ensure that I'm fitting in uh, work a, a good amount of work as well like powerful work um, it's family time uh, Quran time and uh and working out and so i think that is so important that i that i implement this so that i can like construct my isolation time uh, so effectively and so um while i have been working out in terms of skipping and and doing a bit of cardio i need to up it and even with the skipping that i'm doing i'm nowhere near in a calorie uh deficit which is what i want to be in um right now because the only calories I'm losing is through the skipping where mm. normally uh, if I do do a bit of skipping or even if I don't even when I'm walking to my car in the car park and then I'm going to you know walking up the stairs at work and uh, if we calculate all of those small wins I'm actually burning a, a bunch of calories throughout the day on top of if I do some exercise now I'm in my bed I get up I come to my chair I get up I go to the sofa I, mm. and 
Actually, I'm not burning half the calories. So I'm definitely in a surplus. Um, so I decided that just skipping um, is not enough. And I decided that to, you know, over the last few days. So today is going to be the first day where I'm going to do a proper workout. So that means, and that's literally going to be after you and I record this episode, sure. which Alhamdulillah, Allah has timed this episode in a way where I can seek as much benefit and knowledge from you uh, about my workout. I'm going to tell you my plan and then I want you to kind of... Uh, Improve it for me. Okay, go and show. With what I have. Is that okay? Go for it. Okay, so my plan is to... And hopefully this will benefit the listeners as well. So I'm, I'm not being too selfish with it. Uh, but yeah. my plan is to start uh, with some skipping. Like the normal... Uh, like what I've normally been doing. And use that as... Well, uh, stretching and skipping. So use that as my warm-up. So doing a bit of stretching. Doing a bit of skipping. Get my heartbeat um, going. And normally that's where I would end it. And I'd maybe do that once every other day. Because w- when you do quite a lot of skipping, your legs uh, and your joints can hurt. Mm. So... Um, that normally would be the end of my workout. But after that workout, I've got sweat going now, my heart's racing, my, my muscles feel nice and loose. I'm gonna come in the house and I have a bench behind me that you probably won't be able to see uh, on FaceTime. Actually, do you know what, I'll show it to you. Uh, uh, can you see that bench? Oh yeah. Bit. Bro, when you said bench, I thought you meant an actual bench. You've got <laughs> like a bench press. Now, I don't, <laughs> now I don't have uh, that, but I have like this stool kind of bench that's like a nice, like a designed one. And I thought to myself, I can actually utilize that just how I would utilize a bench, mm. a, flat, uh, a flat bench in the gym. And I never considered that. So Inshallah. my plan is to come in from the skipping and then do a push day uh, on some days and a pull day on other days. And so today I'm going to do a pull day, inshallah. But um, basically, the the tables that I'm using to do that I bought for the podcast when I bought these a few years back they're 25 kg each and the reason I bought these specific stools is my priority was weight Mm. and the reason my priority was weight is because to be able to hold a complete arm of a of a microphone you have to have quite heavy tables right Mm. so because they're 25 kg each I I bought these into my office to do this podcast and I've got two of them (laughs) so on on my pool days I can uh, curl I mean, they're quite large, so I'd have to curl one 25 kg ben- uh, uh, stool. Um, but it's very easy to curl in terms of like the the in terms of the shape of it. Um, so I'm curling 25 kg on my bicep uh, or biceps, um, and I can deadlift two of them because they've got handles Mashallah. on a <laughs> on a pool day. So uh, it's a 50 kg uh, deadlift. It's not it's not it's not the highest, but it's also gonna be beneficial. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I reckon. Um, so that's my pool, those kind, those kind of things. And then on a push day, I'm thinking to, on the bench, bench press one of these 25 kg uh, stools. Um, shoulder press with it in my arms, right? Uh, mm. Kind of over my head. And tricep dips on the bench as well. Mashallah. That's what I've seemed to have constructed. Uh, what do you think? So this is... Uh quite like a mix because you said you're going to do a push and a pull day right hence the way you have like yeah that's a, what i'm thinking you got the chest you got shoulders you're incorporating all of it kind of into into one workout uh it's good um one of the other stuff that uh, one of the other things that you can do is um i don't know if you have a resistant band i don't can you are you able to get a hold of one probably not yeah it's, it's a bit ah uh, oh, we might w- no, I don't think I do have okay. one. Well, I was going to say that a resistant band, you can pretty much do everything with just a resistant band. But since you don't have oh, yeah. that, and maybe others won't have it as well. Uh, but resistant bands, they're very, very beneficial. Because um, you can literally squat with it. You can put it being, you can put the line under your feet. Uh, you can hold it here and you can go up and down with it. It will bring resistance to you. You can lay down on the floor, uh, do uh, triceps. You can do chest workouts with it you can do pretty much anything with resistant bands which is they're like very very handy and i've got a pair as well but um in terms of what you're doing inshallah um you can uh incorporate like press-ups in it i would say different variations of press-ups especially slow ones if if you want to if you want to work chest and stuff because your body weight is probably more than uh, more than what you're going to be benching so if you if you can elevate your feet and try to do press ups like that. That's that's gonna bring a lot more weight to you if you want. You know, uh, if you want to do it more for like strength and uh, to gain size uh, and that pump, inshallah, that's 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 quite good to do. Uh, also, do it very slowly. So when you're doing press ups and you're going down, I'll go down five seconds and then explosive on the way up. 
five seconds down uh, and then explosive up and that's to build muscle and to really uh, incorporate all your muscle uh, muscles into it muscle fibers uh, it's all about time under tension so it's not always about the weight you don't it doesn't have to be like a heavy weight but the longer your muscle is under tension the long the more is going to be uh, the more is going to be breaking and the more uh, you're utilizing those muscles so i'll say definitely do it slowly okay. so am i uh, so am i focusing on the squeeze when i get to um let's say for example i'm benching the uh stool mm. bringing it down making sure i kind of feel that squeeze and then pushing it back up slowly yeah so like when when you're bringing it down so you're you're coming like this and so instead of doing yeah. you know like normally like you you're going just up and down mm -hmm. yeah you'd be going five four three two one up five four three two mm. one up so when you do this your muscles under more tension and that's going to break uh, break down more muscle fibers and help you uh, uh, incorporate more of your muscles into it so um i would do say you, you can do this I you can take this principle and do it with every body part so with shoulders with legs squats everything you're doing if you utilize this because you don't have uh, heavy weights with you right now that this is uh, this is going to be a good alternative for you as well, inshallah. Inshallah, I think that what I'm going to do actually, based on what you were saying, because I've got quite I've got a, a, a lot of time in terms of the days I've got to fill, is instead of doing a push day and a pull day, I'm going to do uh, I'm going to do like back and buys on one day, chest and tries on another day, but I'm going to leave my shoulders a, a, as a third day because that allows my muscles, like for example, chest or my biceps to um, recover a bit. Whereas if I'm just doing two different types of days, uh, I don't think having like one day in between is gonna allow me to rest enough. Whereas if I've got three different types of days now, then by the time I, if, if I do three days and then I take a break and then I start that three day process again, um, that allows my, my muscles to fully recover. What do you sure. recommend with legs? Uh, I, th I think firstly, I think that's a, that's that's a much better idea as well because your body's going to be in pain and you might uh, might have lactic acid and you can't do the kind of like the same sort of stuff again and again. Um, uh, as for legs, uh, I would say by the way for every body part that you're doing, try to find about three four exercises that you can do. You can definitely find three four exercises for each body part uh, online if you just search up uh, uh, home leg workout, home shoulders, home this and that. Yeah. Uh, you'll be able to find different exercises. Um, as for legs, I would say do squats. Um, you can still maybe get some sort of weights. <laughs> so I've even seen online some people using, um, uh, you know, the suitcase bags. They oh, I've seen that. They put stuff inside suitcases and they're kind of hugging it and then squatting with it. <clears throat> I haven't tried it myself because uh, Alhamdulillah I have uh, a barbell and, a dumbbell, uh, and dumbbells. So you can do squats, uh, you can do lunges, uh, you can do calf jumps, which is basically you're, you're kind of on your toes and you're just jumping up and down like like you like you would be if you were skipping. Uh, that's good for your calves. Um, what else can you do? You can do. Um, do you have any? Do you have any dumbbells by the way? Or any? I don't have any dumbbells. Okay. Uh, well, you can grab something that's maybe even about ten kilos, fifteen kilos. Uh, maybe you can grab. A uh, uh, what's it called? Oil or something like that. I don't know, like a carton of oil. That's something something that's fairly heavy. That you can that's so stereo. That's so that's such that's that's you stereo stereotyping way too much. <laughs> no, no, but you can you can. I, I don't have. I I I to your surprise, I actually don't have a, a big jug of uh, oil. The reason <laughs> is because I've used it in all of my curries. <laughs> <laughs> no, mashallah. Now even we we keep uh, big uh, big tubs of oil. We we have a big family, alhamdulillah. So uh, it, it goes it goes too quickly. Um, one thing that I think that uh, I can definitely do is that suitcase thing because I have this. I have the holder which will be very easy to to, to hold. Mm. Um, and I do have weighty things, especially with all these po this podcast equipment that I have, like this microphone, for example. Um, the base of it is, has a lot of uh, weight to it because. Um, because it has to be able to hold down a mic. Mm. Uh, so I've got a few things like that. That's actually giving me some really, really good ideas. I'm starting to think that I could, I could really transform my body in this isolation <laughs> period. No, no, bro, you can. You definitely can. It's a, it's a, it's a good time as well because uh, if you want to especially shed fat, 
I think this is the best time to do it. Like this is because you, yeah, you're not focusing more on weight training and stuff like that because most of it's body weight. So you're and you're keeping your and that's the other thing I was going to say. Keep your breaks short because you're not doing heavy weights and stuff. You don't need to have long breaks. So your breaks should be about 30 seconds and it should be kind of like you do one, then the other, then the other, like maybe 30, 45 seconds max. Even though you normally people do that in the gym, but people tend to take longer than that in the gym anyway. People end up taking like two minutes, one and a half minutes, especially if you're doing heavy squats, then you can't really go go back in uh, 45 seconds later. Yeah. And another thing you can do as well, inshallah, thing- is uh, if you have a backpack, you can fill it up with stuff as well and bring it forward, put your hands through the sleeves and uh, basically do squats like that as well. So that's that kind of emulates uh, front squats and that's very good for your quads. I have that um, that baby holder. <laughs> well put. Uh, that goes, uh, the baby comes to the front. It, and you're sorted. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> He's like... He must be like nine kilos or something right now. I don't know. How old is he? So he's five months. Five months. He's probably about seven kilos. Seven, okay. maybe eight kilos. Yeah, but I'm sure he would enjoy it uh, if we were doing squats anyway. <laughs> um, I, 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 uh, just, just, go back to your, just to go back to your point about the fact that this is a great time for people to sh- shed fat. The issue is what I come back to of uh, the fact that you're generally going to be in a calorie surplus because you're not even doing little things like going out. But but let's let let's let's say that that's that argument has been defeated by the home workouts. Let's mm. say you are now you know getting a good amount of uh, a workout in, which means that you can shred some um, calories. But even then, the, the the issue is really the temptation of the diet, the temptation mm. of being able to eat at all times, bro. You you have <coughs> access to your f- kitchen within arm's length. Uh, with to you have access to snacks and you tend to be well me I tend to eat a lot more when I'm just at home when I'm at the office I sometimes forget to eat because mm. uh, I'm so busy at the office and also it's not a place where generally eating is done you know what I mean yeah it's, it, it is a fitna being at home uh, but just try to uh, not buy any any snacks and stuff unless um, you're going to get your wife to like hide it from you or something <laughs> uh, but um my wife asked me to get some snacks the other day and I got a huge bag of it because, you know, the whole isolation, she was like, you know, get get some snacks, this and that, yeah. And subhanAllah, within a few days, like, it was finished. And not just by me, but, like, yeah, no. my siblings, everyone just had it. So um, I think the best thing to do is just not buy it in the first place because when it's not there, you're not really going to have it. For example... If there's fizzy drinks at home, uh, I don't always try to... I try to, like, not have it too much, but... Sorry, Achi. My um, it says my memory card is full. I don't know why. Um. No problem. Do you want to take a break? We we only we're gonna probably go for like another ten fifteen minutes anyway. Yeah. So if you can say, fine. Inshallah. All right. Well. All right. So. Um. So uh, just to go- let you guys know because it, it's probably gonna have a disconnection. Um. Noor's uh, camera just cut off. I think his memory card was full, so he's going to set that up. Um, man, I'm really enjoying this episode because I think this is the kind of conversation that, uh, you know, if we were recording a podcast or not recording a podcast, this is the conversation I would have probably picked up the phone uh, to Noor today and had this conversation with him anyway. Um, so sorry for taking up the airwaves by asking him so many questions uh but i am i was genuinely intrigued and i hope that that's also helped you guys uh, listening in as to what can be done um it goes back to the discussion that usher evans was saying uh, a few episodes back where it's so important to seek advice from people who know what they're talking about people who have experience people who, talk, who teach these things normally because it allows you to think in a different way and um it's allowed me to open up my... I think I've been like down in the dumps a bit thinking to myself, well, what's the point in working out because I'm only ever going to be in a calorie surplus, which is uh, which is not my goal right now. My goal is to be in a deficit. I believe I'm saying that right. Yeah, deficit. I'm trying to have... I'm trying to burn more calories than I'm taking in. And that's because I'm trying to shred some fat. And it, you can get a bit down in the dumps because you think, well, I'm at home all the time. I'm, I'm definitely not going to be in a calorie deficit, you know, in this in this situation where we're in isolation but he's right man and 
I think the key for me is going to have to be to do a workout every day. Even though normally I wouldn't work out every day, but considering the lack of exercise you're going to be doing, like in, naturally, if you don't work out every day because you're not walking anywhere, you're not running anywhere, you're not running for the bus, you're not walking to the train station, you're not walking to your car. Because of that, I think you have to be able to implement a daily exercise or some in some way. So I'm going to just do lighter exercises, but more often. So hopefully, let, inshallah, the plan is seven days a week, do some kind of movement. Um, whether on some days that's just skipping, some days it's just a workout, or some days it's just a few press-ups. I want to try and implement that. And I think exercising your physical body as much as exercising your spiritual, you know, body is very important. And and by that I mean, you know, doing Quran and stuff. And like I said to Noor, I'm trying to get this habit of mixing Quran, exercise and work and family time. I think they're the four things. And it reminds me of this five by twenty rule that I think it was by Warren Buffett, who kind of really preaches this rule which is write a list of 20 things that you want to accomplish and start with the first five and only focus on the first five and in some way every day try your best to accomplish something to do with the first five rules every day and only once you've mastered those rules do you move on to the next five so if if we if we look at that and i say okay working out quran family time and work are my four things right i can't think of a fifth <laughs> if they're the four things then in some way shape or form i need to ensure that i am doing something towards all four of them every day so sometime on a great day that would be reading and memorizing lots of quran doing a full workout with cardio and with weights um spending a lot of time with my family with my son uh, like quality time and you know filming a great episode of the podcast and uh record it and editing the episode and everything that's a great day but on a bad day at least doing a few press-ups before bed 20 press-ups it still means that that thing is ticked off the list and psychologically it's a win even on a bad day reading one page of quran or memorizing you know two ayat um editing an instagram clip for the podcast and been able to kind of put Zakaria to bed or 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 um spend uh, you know take take time out in the evening to still spend at least a, a small amount of quality uninterrupted time um and i think with that rule i think that's a rule that's a kind of guideline for success man because you know psychologically okay i'm about to go to bed i've hit three of those four but i haven't done a workout today okay fine let me do a let me do some press ups um before bed all right, guys, I'm going to pause the podcast here. I'm going to pause it here until uh, Noor comes back. I think he's just clearing some data of his SD card and then we'll get going again, inshallah. Um, okay, so we're back. I just, as as you kind of went off the screen, I just kind of um, mentioned that there was a bit of an issue with your camera. Otherwise, it would just look really weird, uh, us going off. Um, but getting back into the discussion, knowing that we, we've only got about, let's say, 10 or 15 minutes left, um, I know that you're a man of, of, of deep contemplation a lot of the time. And um, it, I always find it interesting when, you know, we're, we're together face to face and, uh, you, you know, you, you're talking to me about things that you've contemplated on or, or kind of very deep thoughts. So I want to delve into the mind of Noor, a.k.a. Strong Believers. And in this time where you've been in isolation, you probably had a lot more time to, to think kind of what have you been contemplating on recently? Uh, that's a good well, Can you hear me? Yep. OK. Um. That's a good question, bro. Uh, I think uh, the main thing I've been thinking about recently is like how um, uh, we we've all been very materialistic, and uh, situations like this kind of strip that away from you and take you back to the root of what is actually n uh, necessary. And we've had these talks before where we've discussed, you know, expenditure and how to save money and this and that. And I feel like this shows what we actually need and what we don't need. Because we focus a lot on buying the latest, you know, trainers, uh, this clothes come out and th uh, this new brand. And we always try to like accumulate more and more. And at times like this, you realize the only things you need is basically a shelter, some basic clothes and food. You don't need to go overboard with uh, many of the things. And uh, I think that's what I've mainly been thinking about recently. Uh, which brings it back to the very basics of what we need and I think it's a good way of um, 
also spending less money and saving money and being more wise on the stuff that we save, um, on the sp on the stuff that we spend, and also the importance of uh, actually saving, because in a time like this, when uh, you can't work and a lot of jobs aren't hiring, so if you don't have a job and you don't have any savings, then it's very very tough, subhanAllah. And with the any kind of government fund that you get, that's that's not going to be enough for you. Um, so um, that's what I've been mainly thinking about, bro. The importance of saving and uh, how we don't actually need so many things around us, but we we end up continuously like accumulating things. That's very true, man. We don't uh, we we do often spend money without thinking about it, and because it's the norm, like to go and spend money on a certain types of uh, um, entertainment, whether that be going to restaurants or um, or whatever it may be buying clothes and stuff now that we are stuck in our homes and we're not buying a lot of those things you're right you do realize how much you actually don't need it and how much it doesn't really because sometimes you think you buy things because it provides you a bit of happiness but you realize that now that we don't have the option to buy them i'd i'd, I'd be surprised if anyone's feeling like super depressed because they're not able to purchase those things right mm. yeah yeah exactly bro and I think the other thing that uh, it, it has made me think about is like um, all the times, like how, how truthful are we with Allah? Because we all want that time. We say like, oh, I wish I could study Arabic, but I don't have the time. I wish I could study the Quran, but I don't have time. I don't have time for this and that. All the things that we say we want to do, but we say we don't have the time. But like you mentioned earlier on, that Allah has basically put us in the situation now. And we can either, you know, just binge watch on Netflix or we can utilize this time. It makes us uh, ask ourselves, how sincere are we with Allah and how truthful are we? Because now he's given us the opportunity and what are we going to do about it? Are we going to utilize it or not? Is it just uh, uh, like for the person that's heedless, this event is just like any other event that happens. Like, you know, there was Ebola, there was other diseases that came and, and went. This is just one of those other things. But for the believer, we have to like try and uh, utilize this time to uh, better ourselves, whether it's in knowledge, whether it's in uh, our recitation, whether we, we've never learned how to even recite the Quran. And many of us, we don't even know how to actually recite the Quran. So those like little things can all be accomplished in this time. And there's a lot that we can do, subhanAllah. There's online classes. Most things have been moved online anyway. So... There's really no excuses for any of us not to uh, uh, learn about our deen and not to accomplish those things that we've always wanted to because now we've been given the perfect opportunity. Yeah, I think you're right and also in that not only do we have the opportunity of time but we also have the opportunity that so many people are giving away things for free um, so that people can benefit. Uh, there's a brother called uh, Maisur Arabic who teaches, he, he runs a madrasa um, for children. He's a graduate from Medina and he... Uh, his focus is the Arabic language and his course for Arabic is like he's basically giving it all away for almost free uh, like what an amazing opportunity and something that's really worth investing in and um, uh, 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 Tim Humble had just released a course yesterday really powerful man so basically you know how right now everybody is at home a lot of the people are with their families a lot of people are with their spouse and the general muslim family is like a mom a dad and some kids maybe some young kids mm. right depending obviously on the age and stuff but let's assume like people our age they might be like a mom and a dad and then uh, some young children and even if it's not even if it's a bit older and it's like an older mom and a dad they're still like the children are a bit older he's basically created a course called the muslim family and sure. It's all about the Muslim family and he's releasing an episode and it's only 30 minutes long. He's releasing an episode every single day. Uh, so the idea behind it is that couples can watch this together um, every day. And like, even if they don't do anything else every day, at least once a day, they, 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 they sit together for only 30 minutes, bro, which is around the same time that you'd be eating your dinner for. And he's made them, he's made them short on purpose. So, but he's teaching from the classical books. He's teaching from uh, the definitions from the Quran or from the Sunnah. So it's not like a course where he's just like giving nasiha. He is teaching from the classical studies, on and it's all about the Muslim family. 
so that couples can sit together every day, every evening, put the kids to bed, eight o'clock, turn on the YouTube and uh, watch a half an hour lecture on Muslim family. I think it's a, that's a, uh, an amazing initiative, man. MashaAllah. It does sound like an amazing initiative, MashaAllah. Is it on his YouTube, yeah? It's on, I think he's, they put it on the um, YouTube channel for uh, Al Madrasa to Al Umriya. It's on his, if you go on his, um, if you go on his uh, Instagram, uh, that he started just using um, I think there might be a, a way to get to it there Muhammad Tim Humble or, 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 or you, it's on YouTube though it's on YouTube but, yeah, yeah I'll check um, it out inshallah it sounds, it sounds pretty good yeah it's amazing man it's amazing I, the the first the first class is like always no matter which class it is I always um, I always find that I have to give myself the opportunity to get into a class and like you know it, it, from like the second one in and the third one in you start getting into it more because it's so important uh, but the the first class is always it tends to be like definitions and like it, it, mm. it gives an introduction to the course right so but so you're it's introdu introducing like what's happening in the course um all of the definitions that you're going to come across the, and then the different ways those things are described because it, it, from an islamic perspective words have to be broken down for in a uh, arabic sense they have to be broken down what that word means in the quran and what it means in normal life what that word used to refer to back in the time of the prophet so uh I always find that I have to carry myself through that introduction class because it's very easy to go, oh, this is just a bunch of definitions. Do you know yeah, what I mean? They go, I'm not going to watch the next class. But you have to carry yourself through that and give yourself a chance because sometimes all we want to do is we want to hear the stories and we want to hear how that implements in my life. But then you realize there's a reason why all of these teachers always spend the first class giving this m big introduction, giving these big definitions and it, it comes into play kind of uh, a few classes in, right? Yeah, definitely, because uh, even besides the time of the Prophet Sallallahu like if you look at certain usage of words and terms, it's used differently in different times. So it's not always, uh, you might read something, even if a person knows the Arabic language, for example, they might read it and think they un they've understood what it means, but it's not actually what it means. There's uh, so many different uh, ways of looking at a word. There's like the Shari'i. Uh, definition there's a technical definition there's a linguistic definition there's so many subhanallah like the word huda in the quran for example i, I believe it's something like 13 different meanings of it huda we know huda as guidance but there's like 13 different definitions some of them are completely different to guidance so if you if if you don't know those you know technical definitions and um what it means in specific ayat and what it means in this different uh, ayah or hadith then uh, it can really throw you off in another uh, class the the way the salaf worshipped allah um there was an ayah being explained um where allah where um in the quran that says that allah created life and allah created death and at that in that ayah the teacher was explaining that by by life um by like the definition, by by saying even though it says life and death, they refer it's referring to dunya and akhirah, which is like mm. how would I ever understand that unless someone was teaching that or giving tafsir like tafsir? You would never, I would never have known that. Yeah, yeah subhanallah, because <laughs> there's even other ayat that talk about life and death, uh, but it's actually talking about life and death, and yeah. it's talking about the first uh, birth, the creation, uh, then uh, dying, then being resurrected, and like you said. There's that definition and then there's the other one talking about the dunya and the akhirah, subhanAllah. Ever since I've known you, since we first started uh, knowing each other, you was always um, adamant on, you know, brothers going to classes and stuff like that. And then I remember recently you you, sp you 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 texted me after we hadn't spoken in a while, just kind of both got busy with life and you uh, messaged me to ask how I am and stuff. And one of the, probably the second question you asked me was... Um, how are your studies going? Are you still studying? Why is it? Why is it that it's so important to you that people are studying? Why is it so important to you that um, and, and that a person has to actually go to study as well? Like, why can they not just read books themselves? Why is that important to you? I think it's a very good question, bro. Uh, first, you why try to do with uh, brothers at all times because we all say like we love each other for the sake of Allah and stuff like that, right? But the reality is, what that means is that you love that person's iman you love that person 
only for the fact that they are Muslim and they have Iman, they believe in Allah, they believe in His angels, His messengers, you have that commonality. And if you don't ask those brothers, how is your Iman? How is your studies? How is your relationship with Allah? And you're not checking, up, checking them up on that, then do you truly love that person for the sake of Allah or not? Because you might ask a person, oh, by the way, you got a new house. How's the new house? You got a new car. How's the car? You got a baby. How's the baby? But what about their deen? What about their akhirah? That's the thing that you claim to love them for that sake, right? You, let, you claim to love them for the sake of Allah and for their akhirah. But that's what you need to ask. That's why I find it quite important to ask brothers, uh, are you studying? How's your iman? How's, how's this? How's that? You were going through, you know, your iman was dipping a little bit. How is it now? Have you improved? What can I do to help kind of thing? So it's important to uh, ask. Um, and the reason I ask uh, if you're still studying and why it's important to study with a teacher is that if you're reading just books, a book is not going to correct you. You might read something and you'll completely misunderstand it. The book is not going to tell you that you're, you've understood this wrong. But a teacher is going to guide you through it. You're going to get stuck on some places and you, you can ask someone, your teacher, your mentor, how do I do this? And even if you look at, bro, uh, I'm pretty sure you've looked into this and come across this, uh, businesses and stuff like that and entrepreneurship, they all say you need to, uh, they emphasize on having an, uh, a mentor. They all emphasize on it. So why would you not have a mentor for the thing that matters most to you, which is your deen? Your, this is your capital. If you don't have a mentor who's going to guide you and who you're going to learn from constantly, you're not going to see, look, you're seeing them worship, you're seeing them deal with other people, you're seeing them teach, you're seeing them do dhikr, you're seeing all of these things and how it's done. And this has all been passed down from tradition, from, from the time of the Prophet to, to students, to their students, to the Salaf, to, to the, uh, you know, uh, all the way down to our teachers. Is being passed down and that's the beauty of Islam that is being passed down in this way so it's important to sit with the teacher because sometimes bro like uh, you, you might your man you, your iman might be feeling uh, uh, low but then you go to your teachers class and just hearing the voice of your teacher subhanallah it can have an effect on you for me personally it does like if I'm feeling low uh, I'm like you know what let me do like let me catch up on some of my classes or something some some of them are online so let me go and catch up on that the moment I hear my teacher's voice subhanAllah he doesn't have to it's, it's nothing Imani he's not even saying anything that's like Imani but the fact that I hear his voice it all rushes back to me like everything I've studied with him everything I've done with him the stories he's told us all the impacts that he's had on us just his voice I uh, kind of um, I link that to like Iman, to Islam, to where I've learned my deen from. So it has a huge impact. Uh, I don't know if it's like this for other people, but from uh, what I remember, Ibn al-Qayyim, he used to say that whenever uh, him and the other, other of his companions and his friends, the uh, other scholars of the time, when they would feel low, they would go to Ibn, uh, Ibn Taymiyyah, Taymiyyah and he would uplift them. Seeing him and seeing him speak would up, uplift them. Their iman and their worries and their doubts, everything would disappear. And for me, having a teacher is like that as well. For me, that's what my teacher does, which is very important uh, to to have that kind of uh, connection. I believe, and I think everyone needs to have that kind of like mentor and teacher to benefit from. Subhanallah, man. Are you gonna get back to uh, releasing content on your um, or kind of like strong believers uh, content and your own podcast and stuff like that? Because I think that uh, your voice is a voice that um, I think you can relate to a lot of people, man. And I think that you can help, um, especially the the younger generation. Um, in any way you can, you can be their big brother uh, virtually. Um, how's your content going? Um. For me, with my content, I've been uh, slacking, to be honest. Uh, I do, uh, there's a lot more I want to do, and I have like a backlog of things on videos. Yeah, you have so much to give, man. I wanted to speak about, but it's uh, sometimes it's time, sometimes it's just like the uh, lack of suitable time, should I say. It's that you might have the time, but you can't do the video in that time. Do you get what I mean? And um, so that's why if you look at my content right now, it's kind of whenever I'm, I have time, whenever I'm walking or like, 
uh, I'm driving or something like that and I'm thinking about something um, or I'm listening to something then I'm like you know what this is a good thing to speak about then uh, then I just write then and then make a video about it but um, I should start uh, my live reminders again inshallah I, I have planned to start the live reminders I feel like I was uh, me personally I was benefiting a lot from it myself uh, not even others uh, but like myself I feel like when you're trying to give a reminder and you might look at some notes you might look at some things that you're going to speak about it actually benefits yourself more than anyone else to be honest um, and in terms of YouTube podcasts uh, I'm going to see inshallah because right now in isolation it's a bit difficult but maybe I'll do what you're doing inshallah and maybe try it from home so you could even see. do I think you have so much to my issue is that um, I hold no weight if I just do it by myself. I have to get the guests on. But with you, Akhi, Allahumma Barik, like, I, I think you have so much to give, just even if it was just a podcast with you on a screen. And that could be your niche as well, do you know what I mean? But more than anything, that that helps eradicate those issues of trying to get access to people. Um, you know, you have your um, camera, you have your mic, and you have yourself, you know. Um, it, and it I think it's powerful. Enough, yeah. even if it's I think it would be uh, very boring if I was just by myself. I'm not, I'm not very <sighs> good at not. just uh, being in front of the camera and... Uh, I, I think that we'll let the people decide that inshallah in the comments uh, <laughs> below and then we can uh, analyze the situation then uh, Noor I want to just say a massive Jazakallah khair thank you so much for joining me uh, today thank you very much for the uh, advice that you've given me on my um fitness my home workouts uh, I'm praying inshallah that I'm able to transform my body over this isolation period um I've, I I came through to, to a real dip uh, man like uh, I had a really strong successful uh year and a half two years of of in my fitness journey uh and then the, the following year and a half um I, I you know I, it came to like a, a screeching halt and so i want to be able to pick myself up and i think that using this time where i have that time to do so uh i, I want to stop making excuses and and, uh, and make that happen so I, I hope and pray that that conversation that you and i had today on the podcast earlier on uh will be one that uh inshallah i can one day write in some kind of uh, memoir and say that was <laughs> a conversation that changed uh, changed things for me in terms of my health uh, so yeah, i really appreciate up, bro. That. i hope you benefit from it uh, i've seen i've seen your um skipping stuff bro it's it's been mo motivating me to like start skipping as well you're doing you a great job mashallah and i'm pretty sure a lot of other people are getting motivated from it so keep it up Absolutely. inshallah and keep uh, keep posting your progress because you. you've you've come a long way i remember you done that transformation video and uh, you had come a long way and inshallah you can uh, you can get back on it again bro inshallah just keep keep on it and just keep consistent inshallah, I, I, I wish i could talk to you for hours and hours and you akhi i mean may allah protect your family akhi man barakallahu feek may allah bless you alaykum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh